Hey everyone, I'm Corey, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate the creation of your Excel pivot tables using Pandas and Python. If you want to follow along, you can get my code from the link in the description below. The easiest way to open it is to get into Google Colab and click File, then Open Notebook, then GitHub from the tabs in the window. Now, all you need to do is paste the GitHub link from the description into that window, and you're off to the races. If you've never used Google Colab, feel free to pause the video and then check out the link to my setup guide in the description. Once the notebook opens, you'll see that I've listed out here the steps to create a pivot table in Excel versus the steps to create one in Python. So I wanna compare these in a second, but I'm gonna jump over to Excel and we're gonna create a quick pivot table just so we can compare it and line it up with this Python code. So the data that we're gonna to use to practice pivoting is gonna be this cars data set. And so as you can see here, it gives us the names of different cars. And then it also gives us information about those cars, like the miles per gallon, the number of cylinders in the car, and the origin where the car was manufactured. So to create this pivot table, we're just gonna go up to the insert tab up here at the top, and then click on the pivot table icon. And this is gonna ask us to provide a table or a range. I'm just gonna give it this entire range here and then I'm gonna press OK. And so when I look in Excel, you can see that I have several boxes down here. I have the filters, the columns, the rows, and the values. And that corresponds to different arguments that we're going to give the function in Python. So if you see here on my screen, you can see that the columns box lines up with the columns argument in pandas. The rows box lines up with an argument called index. The values lines up with the values box. And then this aggregate function, or agfunc for short, is going to line up with the value filled settings, which you find in the values, which we'll look here in a second. So just to make this make a little more sense, let's grab the cylinders, and we're just gonna put that into the rows box. And then for the values, let's just grab one of these here. So let's grab the miles per gallon. We'll drag it down into the values. And then you see here that it says sum of miles per gallon. And so that aggregate function here, which says sum, is going to basically do the same thing. So let's now scroll over here and let's look. So we can see from the pivot table in Excel now, we have the number of cylinders in the vehicle and the sum of miles per gallon. This maybe doesn't make sense, so let's maybe change this by clicking the drop down arrow. And then you can see this value filled settings here. So let's change that to an average. And now this makes a little bit more sense. So before we build out this pivot table, we need to make sure that we grab all of the packages which we're gonna need. So in this case, we're gonna import a few popular packages, including NumPy and Pandas. So to do that, we're gonna type import NumPy as NP, and then import Pandas as PD. And then for this case too, because we're using that car's data set, I'm actually gonna import another library which contains the cars data set just to make things easy. So I'm going to say from vega underscore data sets, import data. So now to pull the data in, what we need to do is we need to create a variable. We're gonna call it cars. And this is gonna be the name of our data frame or basically our table like you have in Excel. And we're gonna say that is equal to data dot cars. And so this data right here is the data that we pulled in from the Vega data sets. And then when we say dot cars, it's just gonna pull that cars data and then save it to a variable called cars. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and let's run both these. You can either click on the play here or you can press control enter. I'm gonna press control enter, control enter, and those both ran properly. You can see that by the green check marks here. So let's now take a look at the data real quick, make sure we have the right thing. So I'm gonna say cars.head, and that's just gonna give us the first five rows of the data set. So you can see this looks like what we had in Excel. Now that we've loaded the packages and the data, we can start building that same pivot table we built in Excel. So to do that, we're just going to now take this cars data frame. So we're gonna say cars, and then we're gonna say dot pivot underscore table. Now, just like we did in Excel, we need to tell it what column we want to use for the rows. And as I said, Python uses the word index instead of rows. And so we're gonna say index, and we're gonna say that is equal to, and we used cylinders in our Excel, so let's use that again, so cylinders. And like we did in Excel, we also want to give it the values that we wanted to calculate. So in Excel, we used the miles per gallon, so we're gonna put a comma in here, and we're gonna say values, and we're gonna set that equal to 
miles per gallon and you notice that I'm putting that inside of these single ticks. You could also use the double quotations as well. That would work. And we need to make sure that we're watching for the capitalization because capitalization does matter in Python. So now when I run this, you'll see that I have a table that matches exactly what we had over in Excel. Another thing that I want to point out about this example is that I didn't have to tell it that I wanted the average. And that's because in this case, the pivot table function uses average as the default. So if I wanted to change this to a sum, I would actually need to then give it the sum. So to do that, I would just add another comma and then I would say ag func equal to, and then inside those tick marks, I would then say sum. So if I run that again, you now see that I'm getting the sum of those values. I don't necessarily want the sum that doesn't make sense for the miles per gallon. So I'm gonna delete that. So just as another example now here, let's say that we wanted the cylinders to show up and just format a little differently. What I could do is I could actually just, let's copy this code. So I'm gonna hover that over that, control C, control V. And instead of on the index, I could say that I want this to be my columns. And now when I run that, you'll see that I have the same pivot table, but now it's just been turned on its side. Now, if we wanted to get a little more complex with this and add in some more variables, we can just paste down the code that we already have copied here. And then let's now add a different column. So let's use the columns argument again. We're going to put inside this tick mark, we're gonna put in the origin. So this is gonna be where vehicles were manufactured. So if I run this, you can now see that I have a pivot table here, which shows the cylinders in the rows and then has a column for the three major countries where vehicles are manufactured in this data set. So we've talked about how to do sums and averages, but we could also do other types of calculations like the count. So if I take this, I'm gonna copy this line into my next code cell here. And then for values, I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna change this to the name column. And this is gonna be the name of the vehicles. And then what I want to do is instead of leaving it on the default mean, I want to change that aggregate function to be equal to count. And so now when I run this, I'll be able to see how many cars there are broken out by the number of cylinders and the origin of those cars. One of the unfortunate things about this table though is you see all of these NANs. In Python, that stands for not a number. In other words, that means that it's missing or it's null and that's just a blank. If we want, we can actually handle that in Python as well pretty easily. We're just gonna keep building off our code, so I'm actually gonna copy this line again, paste it down in the next, and now what we want to do is we want to add a fill value, and this fill value is going to then fill in any of those missing things. As another side note, when you start to get more arguments like this and it starts to get longer and longer, one thing you can do in Python is you can actually press enter to put these onto a new line. And this can just make it a little bit easier to read what's going on with your code. So I'm gonna do that since we're making this thing longer and longer. And so I'm going to now give it an argument called fill value. And you can see one of the things I love about Google Colab is that it's popping up and it's telling me here that that's an option that I can use. So I'm gonna say fill underscore value. And then I'm just gonna set that equal to zero. Another thing I can do here too, as you can see, is these margins. So I'm gonna add another line and I'm going to say margins and I'm gonna set that equal to capital T-R-U-E true. Now I want to give a name to my margins. So I'm gonna add one more line and a comma and then I'm gonna say margins underscore name and then I'm just going to call it grand total. And you might be wondering how this is any better than Excel. I mean, it's taking us quite a few arguments to get something that we could do in Excel probably a little quicker. But one of the things that's really nice about this is once I've written this once, I can then continue to run this code over and over again and use it in my reports. And all I have to do is make sure the data is being updated underneath. This can also be really helpful too if I'm dealing with a lot of data and data which is far bigger than the number of rows which Excel is able to handle. So now let's run this and let's see what we've got. Perfect, so we have the cylinders in the rows and the origins on the columns, and you'll notice that our fill values, anywhere where it was missing is now filled in with a zero. We also have a grand total where we're summing up across the rows and then summing up across the columns as well. Now that we've built out this pivot table, let's now save it to an Excel sheet. So to do that, I'm gonna save this pivot table and I'm gonna create a new data frame. I'm gonna create one called cars underscore pivot. So I'm just gonna say cars underscore pivot, and I'm gonna set that equal to my code here. So now when I run this code, 
you'll notice that it doesn't show anything for my output. And that's because it's now being saved into this variable. But if I added another code cell, if I clicked here and said code and I said cars underscore pivot and ran that, you would see our pivot table is still there. So now that we've got this saved, one thing that we can do is we can now export this out of Google Colab. So to do that, I'm gonna come down into this next code cell here, and I'm going to then make a space, and I'm going to say cars underscore pivot, and then I'm going to say dot to underscore Excel. So I'm saying I want to take this data frame and I want to send it to Excel, and I want to name it something like my underscore fancy underscore pivot table. And then I need to give it an extension. So I need to say dot XLSX. Now, if I run this, you'll see that it runs successfully. So I've got a green check mark here, but where did it go? Well, easy enough. If we go over here on the left side of Google Colab, there's an icon for our files. If we click on this, you can see now that I have the my fancy pivot table dot XLSX file here, and I can just click on these three dots and then click to download. And now when I open it up in Excel, you can see that I have the pivot table which I created in Python. One other thing I wanna show you with these pivot tables is that we can actually give our function several different arguments. So just to give you an example of this, let's take our beautiful pivot table we created up here. And again, we're gonna copy and we're gonna then paste. And what I'm gonna do here is instead of calculating the count, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna calculate, I'm gonna change the values back to the miles per gallon like we had it earlier. And then for this aggregate function, I actually wanna give this two different functions. And the two arguments I wanna give it here are both sum, which will calculate the total, and mean, which will give me an average. So if I'm gonna pass it several different arguments, I actually need to put square brackets in first. So I'm gonna do square brackets, and then I'm going to, in the single ticks, I'm gonna say sum, and then a comma, and then I'm gonna say mean. So you notice this is a little different than what we've done so far, but this is something that you could do for anything else. If you wanted, you could put cylinders and origin also in square brackets and do them in the same line. So there are a lot of different options and ways that you can play around with this function. So if we run this now, you can see that we get the cylinders on the rows, we have the countries here, and then you'll notice also that above that then, it says that we have the sum, and we also have the mean. This is something that can be extremely useful if you need to do several different calculations within one pivot table. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.